Hello everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. My name is Shashank Tyagi and I welcome you all to our international relations series. Today we need to talk about India and Myanmar. Myanmar which is India's gateway to ASEAN. But before we go to ASEAN, let's get into our neighborhood first. Myanmar. What is the history of India Myanmar relationship? Why Myanmar is so important for India? What challenges we are facing in Myanmar and what is the way forward? Before we move, have a sharp eye and note down these dimensions because you can expect question from there. From Prelim's perspective, important locations which remain in news, you can have a question on that. When I say location, you should know that India is using connectivity diplomacy with respect to Myanmar. And under this, we have invested heavily in two key projects, one being Kaladan multimodal project. We are going to talk about it in this video. Apart from this, India, Myanmar, Thailand trilateral highway. So you should know the important location, the states from which th these projects are passing. Then border states, four states for northeastern states have this land border with Myanmar. So we should know about it. And this from me's perspective, these are the broad dimensions. You can expect a question using the phrase that India Myanmar shares multi-layered relationship. Full stop. Discuss the factors which have influenced this relationship in recent past. So first of all, you should be aware of what is the meaning of multi-layered. Some might say, oh, multi-layered means we need to talk about trade, you know, economic aspects and the people-to-people uh, -people connection. But that is quite generic approach to handle this particular question. When it is saying multi-layered, so you should actually reflect what layers are. Starting from the history, as India and Myanmar shares this link that we were ruled by Britishers. After this Anglo-Burman wars, a, a territory was actually ruled by Britishers, but as separate administrative unit. And at that point of time and thereafter, we have seen that many Indians were in key positions of British administration there, as well as with, with major traders, businessmen, these were Indians. And that's why we have seen that uh, people looking at Indians as colonial collaborators. So this has impacted our people to people connection in past. And then we have seen in 1960s the nationalization drive in Myanmar and thereby many private enterprises majorly owned by Indians were actually took over and many Indians faced losses. They came back and we saw a decline in relationship at that point of time. So it means within, if you're using the word history, then you should show that, yeah, these are the nuances around which this, this relationship was evolving, right? Within, uh, when you talk about trade, so you should also talk about the trade prospects which were there earlier and how those trade prospects have made the way where we are standing now. We, need to we, we are going to talk about it. When you talk about geostrategic perspective, location, India's northeast being landlocked and we need access to sea from that particular area and that's how this Myanmar becomes so much important. So this is another layer. Apart from this, this security and peace perspective of this insurgency issue in uh, our northeast and how uh, Indian government has, you know, done you know, collaboration with uh, Myanmar's army in recent past, for example, Operation Sunrise, to tackle this issue. So it means these broad dimensions, so you should know about the dimensions as well as the developments in these dimensions. And those should be contemporary. Okay. Then military coup and implication, how it impacts prospects of India-Myanmar relationship. And when this when question is going to be asked on this dimension, you should know that international relation is a dynamic subject. 
it's not about cramming some notes which were there uh, say six months back there may be some recent developments for example uh, indian government earlier maintaining strategic silence and then took a diplomatic posture pro diplomatic posture you know making statements like violence should be absolved and these pol these political prisoners should be released and at at that point of time then we have seen that indian diplomats participating in key functions of myanmar's establishment and the same day when more than 100 civilians were killed by myanmar's army there so what is the angle and uh coming into picture this asean summit and how there was a call made towards india that india being a neighbor of uh, uh, myanmar sharing more than 1600 you know 1643 km land border so india has this onus to actually bring stability uh, in myanmar so it means military coup and implication uh, within this we also bring the angle of security within this we also bring the angle of democratic values and india positioning itself as south asian leader so it means within one dimension you have a lot of content but the point is content exactly as per the demand of question weaved beautifully so that all important dimensions are covered right china myanmar angle china is the largest investor in myanmar and it, and if you want some comparison so you should know that chinese invest investments in myanmar are near 20 billion dollar and if you want to know about india's it is around 1 billion dollar such is the gap but uh, does it mean that india is out of the league china has captured the uh you can say relationship dimension in myanmar no international relations doesn't work like this if china is invested heavily that was a need of myanmar but myanmar also want to decrease dependence decrease its dependence on china and only credible counterweight in neighborhood is india right so i hope now these dimensions are getting clearer for you then asean Myanmar you know that lot of a lot of steps have been taken by government in recent past on act east policy and it is important for india in number of ways right and for this we should know that only asean country which is ha having land border with india is myanmar so if we want to connect into the depth of asean countries then we cannot sideline or we we it is quite obvious for us to have connectivity diplomacy with myanmar so these are the important dimensions i hope you got a bit clearer now right <clears throat> so whenever you are going to read articles on india myanmar relations now you should collect points developments under the, these dimensions okay now as i told you we share multifaceted relationship starting from historical angle just explain to you colonial past and you should you are well aware of this uh, historical fact that uh, bahadur shah zafar last mogal emperor he spent his last days in burma right then religious and cultural angle is also important that more than 85% population in myanmar are buddhist and for them india is a land of buddha and if india is land of buddha don't you think we have soft power angle here i hope all of you would agree to this fact right and you also must be aware of this that indian government has started this buddha circuits so that if some tourists are coming that then they can have ease in visiting all important locations related to life of mahatma gautam buddh right so this angle can be used we have cultural ethnic religious ties with myanmar 
Now take a look over this geostrategic location of Myanmar. This is Myanmar. And you can see clearly the land border. So India shares 1643 kilometer land border. And along with this, more than 750, more than 750 kilometers square worth of area when it comes to this Bay of Bengal. Don't you think it makes it important, right? Now, these are the states of Myanmar. You can see Sangong, Chin and Rakhine state. Rakhine state where we have seen Arkan army clashing with Myanmar's army. You must have heard about Rohingya Muslim issue, which is among the major challenge in India-Myanmar relationship. So this is the hotbed of that particular issue. In 1951, we signed this friendship treaty and fr from there, our relationship started, you know, forging in informal manner. And we, we know that Myanmar is important geopolitically. Its location is so significant that our good relationship with Myanmar is going to give us edge in forging relationship with other Southeast Asian partners. And we are standing on such a juncture in history that we cannot rely on European and American markets for you know, positioning our products which we want to push through Make in India. We need alternative markets where we already have some soft power link and Buddhism, this culture religion link are the prominent one. Is the only Southeast Asian country that shares long land border with Northeastern India. You can see it. Another point is, Myanmar has this unique, you can say, standing that we have two policies. Neighborhood first policy, which has its roots in IK Gujral doctrine, which says that if India has to increase its, you know, posturing in world politics, as well as India has to take care of its long-term interest. First, we need to forego our short-term interest. We need to invest. We need to support our neighbor. So, neighborhood first policy is important one. So, from this perspective, Myanmar is our neighbor. Apart from this, in Act East policy, Myanmar comes into center. So, there are two policies on the confluence of which we have, you know, developed our relationship with Myanmar. Another angle is competition with China. China has been investing heavily and especially this region has some population which is having Chinese ethnicity. And on this ethnic linkage, China wants to penetrate into this area. And China has also, you know, signed pact to establish China Myanmar economic corridor. China wants to connect this Myanmar with its BRI Belt and Road Initiative. If such is done, then it is, you can say, harm to India's you know strategic interest in Myanmar, where we want to develop our alternative connectivity routes. So what we are doing? So here you can see this Rakhine state. I hope it is quite visible to you. India has been projecting that you may get a lot of investment from China. But that investment is actually give, going to give more benefits to China. Although China is saying that when trade routes are going to be developed, population around these trade routes are going to have more prosperity, more choices, you know, more avenues of growth. And that is also true to a lot of extent means we should have you know practical eye to that means Myanmar stands to gain from this China stands to gain from this but keeping our national interest in picture obviously we have to make a counter policy so you can see Sagar we believe in security and growth for all in this region and within this policy we are developing this Sitwe port here and from Sitwe port, there will be a route connecting river to Palitwa. And from there, this, from there, you are going to have a road 
connect to this zone pui border so there you can see first this is sea route river route road route it means multiple modes are used for transportation and that is why this is known as kala dan multimodal project specifically due to use of this kala dan river and here within rakhine state below you will find kwakpu port which is actually you know an investment of china so this is like our counter to china's presence in bay of bengal now connectivity diplomacy have two major projects i have already told you india myanmar thailand trilateral highway kaladan multimodal security cooperation is important so it means <coughs> india's northeast states insurgency issue we have seen that india and myanmar share porous borders and this is a cause of concern for security and due to this porous border what happens we have seen uh, smuggling illegal trafficking smuggling and insurgents finding safe havens in these deep jungles of myanmar so what we have done example operation sunrise where we have made efforts with myanmar to counter this you must have also heard about surgical strikes which indian army has conducted deep into the jungles within the border of myanmar to actually offset the threat of these insurgents in northeast apart from this we are developing some integrated check post so that we can ease the movement and trade of the border communities because it is important for building confidence and people to people connect and the for, for prosperity of the border areas integrated check post zorin pui i have already told you that we are we are connecting this border crossing under kaladan multimodal project we have also conducted this imbax india myanmar bilateral army exercise so that we can conduct joint operations to actually counter this terrorist in north east and this is also important for myanmar itself right although there has been some news that myanmar's army may be supporting some insurgents in order to counter the some groups which are bringing some challenge to myanmar's army but these dynamics keep on changing and we are you know we are going to use this uh, access of indian and myanmar's army to counter the security threat economy cooperation is another key you can take a look over this data india stands myanmar's fourth largest trading partner so those who were thinking that oh now myanmar's army is at uh, you know is ruling and now myanmar's army may actually cut off india's you know india's connectivity india's trade how can you actually you know do you think that, that is practical considering this fact that myanmar's second largest export market is india can they easily cut off this export market because their own trade livelihood their of their own people is dependent on india's market so the moment they cut off what is going to happen there'll be chaos there be economic imbalance so my friends here economics is actually managing geopolitics 25% of the total export india is absorbing india is also the seventh most important source of myanmar's import and from this perspective you should you should also look at this data it is 80 million dollar it means india can actually do more with respect to export into myanmar but as of now this is limited now coming to the broad challenges which we are facing number first rohingya muslim issue since rohingya muslims have traditionally been in this uh, you can say opposite position to the myanmar's establishment and in the past we have seen then when questions were raised from ang san suu ki 
that what's her take on Rohingya Muslim issue? Because neighbor countries wanted Myanmar government to take the responsibility of Rohingya refugees. So at that point of time, Aung San Suu Kyi remained silent. So that is a cause of concern too. Means if we choose democratic government, can this democratic government help us solve this Rohingya issue? Because when these Rohingya Muslims are, you know, uh, are having status of illegal immigrant into Bangladesh and India, so it is a cause of con concern from security perspective, as well as, as well as these regional, you know, squabbles with the, with the local population. Second is China is investing and in pulling Myanmar into its orbit. That is another challenge. What we need to do? Should we actually fight China in the game where China is already having edge? Because we should not fight China in terms of how much investment China is doing. Obviously, China can do more investment, considering China's economy is export-based economy and having huge foreign exchange reserve. What we can do? We should we should invest and we should connect in areas where we have leverage. That is border, that is people to people connection, that is establishing that we are here for security and growth for all, which may not be the case in case of China. China being a new colonial power, new imperial power, using checkbook diplomacy to compromise sovereignty. And here we can say that we are here to actually adhere to this sovereignty. We adhere to this territorial integrity, non-intervention, right? Porous Indo-Myanmar border, I told you, this is a challenge and which leads to, you know, infiltration of militants, illegal arms and drugs. Then bilateral trade has not been up to the mark. This is another challenge, means there is shortage there. Then military junta in Myanmar and this compromise which is happening with democracy. So it can be a challenge to India's standing. And if neighborhood is on fire, can we actually sit in peace? No, right? So these are the challenges. So I hope this video helped you get a grasp on the important dimensions which are in India. Myanmar relations and now you will have a sharp eye on the developments under the dimensions which we have discussed. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. This PDF will be available in Shashank Tyagi for you Telegram group. If I could be of any help, you can shoot me a message on Insta, Twitter. I'll be more than happy to help you out. See you.